Out West, it was the Dallas Stars with a win over the Colorado Avalanche. And this game wasn't close until it was, but the Dallas Stars end up putting it away. But holy smokes, there had to be some clenched whatevers in that arena as Colorado went from being down 4 nothing to down 4-3 with a couple minutes left and the goalie pulled and Nathan McKinnon out on the ice doing Nathan McKinnon-y things. That had to just be, like, could you imagine blowing seven goals worth of leads in two games? But Dallas is able to survive, and they are able to, to hang on. But this just shows, in the Stanley Cup playoffs, you can't take your foot off the gas pedal for a second. Because Dallas goes up four, and they kind of back off a little bit. And Colorado gets that much room, and they're just gone. And they, they were able to, to get their way back into this one. So a lesson learned for a Dallas Stars team that has quite a few veterans on this squad, but a lot of young players in the lineup as well. And I think they kind of learned their lesson. But the man who was at the front of the charge initially that led them to being able to take their foot off the gas was Miro Heiskanen, who was everything this team needed in this game. It is unbelievable how he is always in the right spot. And Tanev being his defensive partner a lot of times really allows him to freelance out there, but he knows where he is supposed to be always. And he is fast enough to get there and he is skilled enough to be able to make the right play once he gets there. And that's both offensively and defensively. There were times where Colorado was trying to get that rush going and he either takes the right angle to force it into the wall and create a turnover or just be confident enough in his skating and confident enough in his partner that he is able to go up, make a play, and send it back the other way. That's where Dallas really, I thought, shined in this game was cutting off the Colorado rush, especially in the neutral zone, and really... Um, pardon the pun, but really neutralizing Colorado's offense and their ability to, to get things going off of the rush. They, they just shut a lot of that down and sent it back the other way. But it wasn't just defensively. Heiskanen, um, along with Hintz, on the, I believe it was the 2 nothing goal? Uh, either way, um, I think it was the first goal he scored of the night. Um, where there is a pass in front, two Colorado defenders are there with the puck, but it is Hintz battling, and Heiskanen is in there as well, and he is working for it. And then the puck comes out, Colorado can't clear, Dallas gets possession, Heiskanen drifts from the slot over into the uh, one-timer position, the OV spot, but just reversed. And takes a bullet of a feed from Hens and hammers it almost through the net. If that was uh, Wayne Gretzky 3D Hockey 98, the net would have come flying off. Like, he just annihilated that shot. But again, it is that awareness. It is the reads. And then it is the talent to be able to take advantage of all of it. He really is the complete package. And... Uh, again, classic radio trope. I don't think we talk enough about how damn good that dude is on the Dallas Stars. And um, if anyone was able to get by him, Ottinger was tremendous. Both goalies really were, which is a weird thing to say in a game where eight goals were scored and seven of them have goalies in the net. But both goalies, I thought, were really, really good. But Ottinger just made some un believable saves and saves that you were not expecting him to make and he was just standing tall and Colorado had some chances to to break through and every time he was there to shut the door and that allowed Dallas to be able to get their offense going to really be able to to get that ball rolling downhill and Ottinger was I, I thought one of the stars of the game even though again eventually three goals get past him he was excellent for um for the Dallas Stars but but like truthfully this was a team effort like the Duchesne line was really really good in generating a lot of offensive zone time and creating their opportunities and again it was a full team effort going up against Nathan McKinnon they at one point they did it was an ozone face-off and they put the the Dallas fourth line out there against McKinnon and McKinnon had a, a few seconds in the offensive zone that that ended up being dangerous it was toward the end of the shift but for the most part they made McKinnon defend and McKinnon still looked dangerous in this game, but they they did a good job of keeping Nathan McKinnon in the defensive zone as much as possible and really making that line work and force them to, to create um, in ways that they are not necessarily used to. That There was not a lot of real extended shifts for that McKinnon, Ranton, and pairing in the offensive zone. They had some. For sure they had some. You're not going to just pitch a shutout against those guys. They are simply too good. But they... They did such a good job of making McKinnon play 200 feet from his own net. I don't think they're going to be able to do that a whole lot in this series, but they did it really effectively in in game two here 
on the Colorado side, they were able to get back into this one, not because McKinnon played so well, although again, he played fine, but it was the depth guys who came up. Curry Vanta was obviously, um, or sorry, Curry Vanta, um, no, I think that I, I had that right the first time, um, he, he was on a mission in this game, and the, the former Dallas star was throwing his body around, he makes a strong play um, in front of the net, and gets a goal, uh, Colton made some good plays as well, you have um, Cogliano making a good play, setting up the um, the, the two... 4-2 goal, sorry, um, and creating those opportunities. And then even Lekkonen, who is just, I mean, I'm not breaking any news here, but one of the better defensive forwards in the league. He is like one of the last guys back and skating backwards and makes a smart play defensively. Um, he ends up getting a goal, but it was just, it was the guys who brought the lunch pails who ended up coming up with big time games for the avalanche to get them back to within striking distance where they weren't able to, to break through. So this was one of the rare times where it was the depth that was able to keep Colorado in this one and kept them moving forward. But th this series is going to be an absolute battle. And I, I would say in this one, credit to the Stars for implementing their game plan and really executing it brilliantly.